waking up in your room in the house you shared with Takoyami for almost a month. During the night you would be awake. There had been no restrictions or house arrest for you. Opening the window to smell the gentle night air really felt nice on your skin. Smiling gently seeing the moon and stars. You remember the first star you seen with Tomura, beginning a flashback. At the time you were four years old, your quirk had become too much for your body. Tomura saw you as a monster like him, but the more time he spent with you, all you remember was seeing Tomura holding a star in his hand out to you. How bright the star was made you see why Tomura made the league in the first place. Tomura had told you that the world he wanted to see so badly that only you could make happen, and you would. End of flashback. After taking a shower and getting dressed, you left your room, then walked down the hall to the kitchen. Dark Shadow was waiting for you at the table with a paper. Evening, Dark Shadow. So, how did you sleep? I slept well, thank you. Another assignment for me? Dark Shadow nodded his head, only seeing Dark Shadow awake meant that Tokoyami was still asleep, as usual, or away in the city. The assignment for today was to make a medicine with a special herb that bloomed at night. Knowing that you were able to go farther into the forest made you so happy, and maybe there was a chance to find a note. Leaving the house alone to go find the herbs was nice and you were able to go explore. About a few minutes from the house now, closing your eyes, then kneeling down on the ground and placing your hand flat on the cold grass, taking a deep breath, then concentrating on the lights from the herbs underground with the exact locations. With a swift movement of your hand, then using the water in the ground in a second, all the herbs in the different locations were now in your hand carefully placing the herb in the bag, then looking at the moon again, you whispered in the gentle breeze, snow from the north, may it rain. Deciding to take a small walk a little more further to the stream, you see when you used your night vision. When you reached the stream, you almost cried. Kurugiri was standing on the other side of the stream, Deep down, you wanted to hug him, finally seeing another person who raised you. The only way you and Kurugiri could talk, with no one knowing, was through the water like he taught you to, when you could barely talk. As it finally began to rain, you closed your eyes, then made an ice cage, so that the sound of the rain would be louder. Maintaining your breathing and heart rate at a steady pace, you could keep the ice cage and rain going till the next night if you wanted to. Kurugiri spoke in a comforting tone to you. I expected nothing less from the child of Tomura. How is my father, Kurugiri? Is he safe? I promise you that Tomura and everyone else are safe. Hearing Kurugiri say those words put your worries at peace, and now your heart was more calm. Your fingertips faintly touched the earrings on your left ear, and then a collar, slowly opening your eyes to see Kurugiri. Even Kurugiri could see Dobby and Toga when he looked at you, and also a bit of Tomura. Kurugiri was thankful that he got to see you grow up to be a hero and a villain. Before Kurugiri disappeared, he gave you the necklace that had your first star inside the locket. Walking back to the house after... You let the rain melt the ice cage and had been given a new assignment from Tomura, picking up a bag of herbs under the tree. Just thinking of your new assignment made you wonder why. Tomura wanted you to get close to Takoyami, then, then have him join the League. And from what information the League had on Tokoyami, there was no stopping him. Just thinking of Tokoyami even a little made you blush very deeply, but during the few weeks, the both of you had slowly got to know each other more. Back in the city, Tokoyami was in a conference room, 
going over every detail and report from the police. None of the new information made sense or even any leads that were to where the league was hiding in the city. Are they hiding or planning? Tokoyami, we won't find them not like this. When Tokoyami took a seat at the table by the wall, he knew that Shoto was right. The only person who would know the location of the league was you. But Tokoyami would never force you. When Shoto tried to get information from you, things ended badly. You... You ended up almost killing Shoto with your ice coffin. After that, Tokoyami kept you safe and making sure that no one got near you without his permission. Even Tokoyami knew how gentle and caring you were. Only if anyone threatened you, that's when you used your quirk with no mercy or discretion. Then Shoto asked Tokoyami something. So, how are they since the interrogation, Tokoyami? They're more calm now and stable, Shoto.